The legendary Saiyan who became the father of shonen anime, the man who took on foes such as Frieza, Cell, and Patrick Star, now takes on an enemy he never seen before. Nature's answer to humanity's recklessness. Godzilla Earth, how would that go down? Who's coming out on top as Earth's greatest fighter? Man, what's good, Titan? It's your most hated Z fighting kaiju power scaler here, King Churros. And I'm here to answer that question. Who wins between these two legends? You guys voted for Goku to be our very first anime character in a kaiju battle. So did you guys set my mans up? Or is this going to be another victory under his belt? Well, let's get into the stats. Godzilla Earth began his journey hitting triple doubles, biting in a multitude of kaiju such as Baragon, Varen, Mechagodzilla, Gigan, and more. Some of them even tried spinning the block for a rematch and still got folded. He already proved he's the strongest, but he didn't stop there. He stole Final Wars complete swag and charged up a super beam to destroy the Gorath before he could destroy the planet Earth. To pull off a feat like that, Earth would have to produce 76 Rana tons of TNT. That's enough power to wipe out dwarf stars. Godzilla Earth would only become more powerful after this feat as he grows huge, going from 50 meters to a skyrocketing 300 meters and a heavy 100,000 tons. Whatever supplements Godzilla Earth was on, he gotta put me on that. Cause this Kevin Hart height ain't it. I've been trying to go D1 for like the past 17 years and it's not coming out for me. So please help me out. The now larger Goji took over Earth and made it his domain, going from door star power to a now to be stated star crushing power. The minimum power needed to do this is seven quetatons. That's 27 zeros after the seven, bruh. And if we assume this includes large stars, then that increases to 760 quetatons. But no, 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 Godzilla Earth didn't stop there. After putting Mecha Godzilla on a shirt, a new opponent rolls up on him, King Ghidorah. Now in this epic, Legendary, engaging battle. Godzilla and Ghidorah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh yeah, the, the best fight ever featured Void Ghidorah, an interdimensional being who planned on consuming the universe. When he engaged on Godzilla, he opened three black holes and our boy Goji destroyed these black holes with calcs coming in from 183 foe to 81 kilofoe. That's enough power to wipe out entire solar systems. His abilities are nothing to scoff at either. He has a devastating heat rate, sonic cutting tail whip, a force field, and a stinky breath. Earth's atomic breath is a particle beam, meaning it moves at relativistic to light speed. Once again, Rodan could never. The Rodan slander is not ending anytime soon, folks. Godzilla Earth brings a major threat to the cosmos, and that's not even including his scarlet form. Can Goku even fare against this power? Let's find out. Son Goku even as a JIT was clowning martial art masters and continued to grow in his skills making him one of the toughest fighters in the universe. When Goku got hit that his birth certificate was fake, he faded Vegeta, a Saiyan who threatened to destroy the planet Earth. Goku was able to counter this beam with his Kaioken times 3 and when he further amplified it he overpowered Vegeta's beam, easily putting him at planetary. He also outscales Piccolo who destroyed the moon. Uh, okay, okay, I know the moon isn't as big as a planet, but the explosion was so big that it had calcs putting it into large planet, making Goku easily planet to large planet. Now, is that enough power to stop Godzilla Earth? Well, no! I, I shouldn't have to explain why planetary metas isn't above solar metals, but Goku isn't done yet. What powers is he packing in a Namek arc though? When the absolute menace Frieza rolls up, he destroys planet Vegeta with just one finger the disrespect. See, if that were me and Frieza destroyed my planet, you know what I would do? What I would do? Nothing, I'd be dead. But that's still crazy. The calcs for this go into 4.8 quetatons of TNT, AKA Dwarf Star level. Goku surpasses first form Frieza, which would also put him at this level. So at this point, Goku should be able to body Godzilla Earth in his 50 meter form. But that's not Earth's final form and neither was it Frieza's. Frieza in his final form became immensely more powerful, having the Z fighter shivering and giving Vegeta the whooping of disrespect. Oh, no. It was over for everybody. They were all getting cooked. It was done. Well, until. Oh uh, yeah, now my dog is cooking. Super Saiyan Goku is a massive power up, making him 50 times stronger. 
If we apply this to his low end of 4.8 quetotons, he would increase to 240 quetotons. At a low ball, Goku would be star level already. Taking the baseline requirement to be star level interpretation for Godzilla Earth, Goku would smack him with ease. But Earth and Planet Eater is in the solar metas, so Goku would have to do some more powering up. Now in the Cell games, Goku was able to combat Perfect Cell, a being who threatened to destroy the solar system. He also had implications that he could destroy the universe. Then there's also this pink menace known as Boo, who was causing irreparable damage, literally destroying a galaxy. He even tried competing with Dashi for the loudest oh being God, in the universe oh and ripped a hole in space time. He lost, by the way. Boy. Some say this was over time, but this will still grant multi solar system scaling. And just like Cell, there's also implications that Boo would also destroy the universe. With Super Saiyan 3 Goku being able to battle Majin Buu, which, which scale Goku around those tiers. And yes, Goku should definitively defeat Godzilla Earth by the Cell games or the Buu arc, depending where you think those villains scale. And he should win pretty handily too. I didn't bring up Goku's crazy speed earlier for a reason. The Piccolo Moonblast I mentioned earlier was accomplished around 3 seconds, which grants relativistic speed, and Goku in base is faster than Piccolo. Then you add his Kaiokens and his Super Saiyan amps, and he would easily be into the faster than light speeds. You can even argue higher with Goku's movement speed alone, but let's be real guys. Do I need to? Look at Earth. And yes, I know that's his travel speed, but they might as well be the same since Goku fought opponents much faster than Godzilla Earth's combat and reaction time. So Goku should easily speed blitz and even one-shot Godzilla Earth with a basic key blast. Only one way I can see Goku losing is if he sells the fight on purpose, but Goku never sold a fight on purpose. Hey, sell! Uh, um... Goku, you have a son. So there is a chance Goku might let Godzilla go into a Scarlet form to power up, but... He's still getting washed! <laughs> you, you guys thought the fight was gonna change? No! Goku's still clapping. His Scarlet Form can't save him, unless we want to take this statement into question. <laughs> Godzilla Earth. Ain't nobody falling for that. We know you paid Toho for that statement. And just like Aiden Ross and Cardi, you got scammed. So with that, Goku's sending Godzilla Earth straight to King Kai's planet then going back home to training. Goku, by the end of Dragon Ball Z, wins. So, Churro Gang, what you guys think? Do you guys agree that Goku wins, or am I certified Godzilla Earth hater? I know a lot of Dragon Ball stands will be breathing down my neck about not mentioning a multitude of statements and feats, but that was on purpose. Hey, bro still won. It's not that deep, my friends. Goku may beat Godzilla Earth, but does that mean he beats Void Ghidorah? The interdimensional being that had the whole universe shook? Would Dragon Ball Super Goku be required to stop him? Well, if you guys want to find that one out, get this video to 100 likes, and we'll see if Goku got what it takes to defeat Void Ghidorah. But with that out the way, guys, I'll see you guys later.